I'm going to do this entire presentation in Universal Dashboard so that you guys can kind of see how I build my dashboard. Um, I'm going to go over some code, how you build different controls in Universal Dashboard. I'll talk about some concepts about Universal Dashboard. Um, and yeah, by the end, you should have uh, kind of a basic working knowledge of uh, what it's capable of. Um, it's a really big module, so um, there's a lot out there, but I'll give you guys a bunch of resources and stuff like that so you can kind of go play around yourself. So I have a website here, um, and it is running inside my PowerShell console. So uh, right now it's just loading, um, you know, random cat GIFs and kind of just loading some images, that kind of thing. But um, it's all written in PowerShell. So uh, a little bit about me. Um, I'm a seven-time Microsoft MVP. I own a small little software company, which is now my full-time gig. Um, and I am a two-time Ironman triathlon finisher. Uh, I live out in Haley, Idaho. There were some questions about where Idaho is actually located. It's kind of on the near west side of the United States here. Uh, kind of, we're up in the mountains. And most people make jokes that Idaho is all about potatoes, but it's also very beautiful out here. This is actually a picture I took uh, this winter um, up in the mountains. So, a little bit about me. But this is mostly about Universal Dashboard. So Universal Dashboard is a PowerShell module that allows you to create websites with PowerShell. So the, the name is kind of a misnomer uh, at this point. Um, it started out as just dashboards, just charts, and you know displaying little tidbits of information, that kind of thing. But it's kind of like grown into this like web framework um, that you can use uh, directly in PowerShell. So some of the core like technologies that uh, this is built on are uh, ASP.NET Core, which is Microsoft's web like framework, um, and that's what's responsible for like serving up the web uh, pages and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, on the front end, so the you know, website, the web page that you're looking at here is actually built on Facebook's React technology, which is a JavaScript library for building web in interfaces. So these are all what they call React controls, um, which kind of allows for uh, easier composition of websites uh, rather than just basic HTML. Um, the look and feel is uh, based on Google's material design. So it's kind of the, the concepts built into how this looks is called material design, similar to the kind of like the bootstrap uh, concept, uh, just looks a little different. And then obviously the interface for this entire thing is uh, via PowerShell. So um, this entire website is pretty much built in PowerShell. You don't need to know HTML, JavaScript, CSS. You don't need to know how to like run a web server necessarily or anything like that. Um, you just need to know a little bit of PowerShell and um, eventually a bunch of different universal dashboard controls to be able to uh, produce something like this. Some other like tidbits about universal dashboard. Um, you can host it anywhere. So it is um, a PowerShell module and it works uh, pretty much on any platform, both PowerShell v5 as well as PowerShell core v6 and v7. Um, so I've seen people host it, you know, just on the command line. You can start it up as a Windows service. You can host it in Azure and IIS. Um, you can even spin it up inside a Docker container or um, like a Raspberry Pi or Windows IoT device. So anywhere the PowerShell runs, uh, Universal Dashboard should work. Um, some of the like benefits of, or some of the features of Universal Dashboard um, include things like uh, easy to use controls. So these are some of the controls that we're looking at right now. Uh, what these are, are called cards. So you can put like you know these boxes with images and titles and text in them and that kind of thing. There's also charts and uh, you know text boxes and inputs and that kind of thing. Uh, we'll get into a bunch of that. Um, so we're going to go over a bunch of the different controls in this uh, demo, um, and I'll just kind of show you that the code that is behind uh, creating that. The other thing that you can do is exposing REST APIs. So I know you guys are talking about consuming REST APIs with invoke web requests and that kind of thing, um, but you can also expose your PowerShell scripts as REST APIs. So if you wanted to integrate with something that doesn't know how to talk PowerShell, you could actually stand up a, a REST API that's wrapped around your PowerShell commandlets and then kind of expose that uh, over HTTP. So I'll show you how to do that in this demo. Um, some other things that are a little more advanced topics are built-in authentication. So you can actually do uh, login pages and uh, role-based access control, that kind of thing, uh, as well as like really advanced um, customization. So not only can you do like 
custom HTML controls and CSS and that kind of thing if you want to, but you can also use JavaScript to bring in new React components. Um, and I'll show you uh, a custom React component that I've, I've kind of um, built. So Universal uh, Dashboard Community Edition is free, um, and it's up on uh, GitHub, so it's also open source. Um, there is an Enterprise Edition that I offer that uh, you know, helps pay the bills, that kind of thing, but um, most of the stuff that I'll be showing off today is actually in the Community Edition. So um, we're going to just kind of step through some of the basic controls and then some of the concepts around REST APIs and that kind of thing. Um, and then eventually I'm going to show off some mapping controls that I just added in the most recent version. So what I'm actually doing right here is kind of um, one of the concepts of the Universal Dashboard is that you have a dashboard and then you can have pages within that dashboard. On the left-hand side here, you can see this is Adam, the... Yep. Can I stop you a second? So sure. there's a, uh, a free version and a, and a pro version. And right. um, so some of the... the I expect the um, the variances would be like support and stuff like that. Is is there a method for the free version to get support? Or if you're having trouble, is it just, you know, follow the docs kind of thing? Or is there a community? Or how does that work? Yep. So if you guys are, have questions, there's forums at universaldashboard.io. Um, it's actually pretty uh, active. And we have some, like, pretty heavy power users of Universal Dashboard that are always answering questions on here. So... Um, you're not going to be in the dark, and then, you know, I spend my time, you know, occasionally answering questions here, that kind of thing, too, so. Um, and then yeah. the, the professional version, is, is it is it like a, a scale thing? Is that one of the, the major features of professional? Uh, the professional version, to go down to, uh, yeah. there is actually a feature comparison doc I can, I can send out, but uh, pretty much what the, uh, the pro version includes are, are the authorization and authentication pieces. <laughs> as well as some, um, like, you know, premium charts and the maps and stuff like that. That stuff is in the enterprise version. Um, the basic charts and input and REST APIs, all that stuff is all in the community edition. So I would say, like, whenever I talk about this, like, you could do, like, 90% of uh, what is in Universal Dashboard with the community edition. And then, you know, if you need that extra 10%, then, you know, it's a pretty reasonable cost for um, doing that. So Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. So um, right here, what I have is, a, uh, you know, Universal Dashboard Lingo is a dashboard with multiple pages on it. So you can define um, pages and then create this navigation view, that kind of thing. Um, and we're just going to kind of go through some of these topics, um, layouts, some basic controls, talk about some visualizations such as uh, charts, um, counters, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we're going to get into inputs a little bit, um, how you can actually take input from users and then execute PowerShell script based on their input. Uh, dynamic interfaces, custom elements, maps, um, and then if we have time, we'll get into some of the authentication and authorization, but it, if not, um, that's okay. So uh, what I'm doing is actually running this dashboard in um, auto-refresh mode. So anytime I make a change to the, my PowerShell script, it's actually going to refresh the web browser and update that uh, page with the new content for this particular dashboard. So what I'm going to get into here is skip some of these pages that we looked at before and kind of get into some of the basics of um, Universal Dashboard. So uh, is that text big enough for everybody? I'm going to take that as silence is success. Um, and what we're looking at here is uh, Universal Dashboard. Text is good. You're good. Sorry. Okay. We're good. We're we good. muted the room. We keep muting the room so you don't hear us. Okay, no, that's cool. All right. Um, yeah, so what we have here is just uh, an example of some of the commandlets that you'll see, like new UD page. Um, we have, you know, getting and stopping the dashboard, which is actually the web server, that kind of thing. And then at the very bottom of this script, what we're doing is we're calling start UD dashboard, passing in our dashboard variable, and then that's what actually starts the web server. Um, and like I was talking about before, we have this auto reload functionality. So if I change this particular uh, PS1 file, it's actually going to refresh that uh, web browser and update it with the new controls that I'm adding. So let's actually go back up to this layout page. So right now we're looking at this layout page. Uh, you can see that I've set it an icon as like a table icon, and that's what actually shows up in the navigation view. Um, and let's look at some basic ways to lay out controls on your dashboard. 
So I'm going to create a new heading that just kind of describes what this particular section of the dashboard is, and then I'm going to lay out some controls of the dashboard. So the easiest way to lay things out is using new UD layout. Um, what it does is it's going to space things out based on how many columns you define uh, in this column uh, parameter here. So I want four column layout on my dashboard. And as you can see, I have what? I think I have nine UD cards inside here. So the cards are the things I was talking about before where we had that image and a title and then like, you know, some text in the middle. Um, you don't actually have to put an image and all I'm doing is creating a bunch of different um, black cards on the uh, screen so that you'll be able to see uh, how this layout works. So now I've defined this UD layout with four columns. So what I should see is four columns per row and then it'll create new rows um, based on um, how many controls you have in there. So now if I go back to uh, Universal Dashboard, you'll see that it's created those, you know, nine different um, cards within my layout. So that's pretty much the easiest way to specify a layout because you don't have to really worry about, whoops, um, you know, getting really intricate with your, your layouts on your dashboard. So now if I delete a couple cards and go back to it, you'll see that um, now we still have a four column layout and uh, it's remove those bottom two cards. And if I were to change the layout to like a two column layout, it should refresh that page. And you'll see that now it's stacked them in a two column layout. So similar, uh, there's some other command lines that exist that uh, make it more customizable. So for example, you can use new UD row and new UD column to actually customize the layout like as far as you wanna go kind of thing. Um, so in this, particular section here. I'm defining a new row using new UD column, and then I'm specifying, specifying some columns for that particular row. Um, yeah, Adam, he, yeah, go ahead. So everybody in the room here is like, how did you uncomment all those lines at once? <laughs> and then uh, again. You yeah, hit control, control KC. There's like a developer, yeah. Hit control <laughs> KC, and then if you hit control KU, it does uncomment, so. Oh, man. Badass. <laughs> All right. There you go. Thanks a lot. You All learn right. something every day, right? <laughs> um, all right. So what uh, UD is using is a 12-column a, a layout system. So that means that you have 12 sections to work with. So if you do a size 4, a size 2, and a size 6, that adds up to 12. And then um, you can think of this taking up, you know, 4 twelfths, 2 twelfths, 6 twelfths of the page. Um, and then when you go back to the page, you'll see how that, that ends up is that allows you to kind of adjust the width of each one of the components that you're laying out inside your dashboard. So new D row, new UD row has a whole bunch of different options. So, or new D column actually, uh, has a bunch of different options in terms of how you want to actually lay things out. So not only can you adjust the sizes, but you can also, um, yeah, and I just thought a question about, it is like based on Bootstrap's 12 column system. So um, that's kind of the similar concept. Um, and you can do things like offsets. So I, I specified an offset of two. That means it's gonna shift over this content down here um, by two, that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, what you can do is you can actually get real crazy. And if you want this to work on different screen sizes, what you can do is you can specify a small size, a medium size, and a large size. Large size meaning a large size screen, medium size screen, or small size screen. So then your dashboard will actually adjust based on what you're looking, what kind of device you're using. So uh, you can see here I'm on a large screen. If I were to take this uh, browser window and start to shrink it down, you'll see all of a sudden I'll hit a particular width and now this has uh, changed size. And then if I keep going smaller, smaller, like I'm on a phone, all of a sudden it gets uh, the full width of that row. So you can do that for all your columns. You can see I didn't do that for these and they look kind of weird. Um, new UD layout will automatically set uh, the mobile, the mobile friendly kind of view for you. All right, so that's kind of like an overview of layouts. Uh, you can get pretty crazy because you can nest rows and side rows and all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of, you know, go as far as you want, pretty much, in terms of... There was uh, a question from the chat, Adam. Yeah, can sure. You define what, can you define what a small, medium, or large screen is, or is it just a browser standard thing? 
uh, it is just built into the, like the CSS library we're using. So I would have to look up the exact dimensions, but it's something like 700 pixels is a medium screen, and like under like 350 is um, a small screen. But yeah, right now it's just uh, hard coded to those values. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's kind of layouts. Let's talk a little bit about some like really simple basic controls. Um, we've been using UD heading a little bit. Uh, UD heading allows you to specify text. You can specify sizes, that kind of thing. Um, one thing that we've kind of touched on a little bit is UD card. So we saw UD card with images before. Um, uh, you can also do things like put links at the bottom of cards um, using new UD link. Uh, you can even style the cards by specifying background colors and font colors, that kind of thing. Um, so if we go back to here and go to our basics page, you'll see that I have a couple of different types of cards. Um, you can nest any control you want inside a card. It doesn't just have to be text. You can put, you know, uh, images or charts and that kind of thing inside the cards. Uh, here's the example of a link that you can click and goes to Google, um, and then the styled card on the right hand side here. Um, I'm just going to uncomment a bunch of these just because. Some of them are cooler than others. Um, you can use collections to, you know, put a bunch of uh, different items together. So I have three steps. I've used UD collections and collection items to create those collections. Um, there's also like JavaScript -y controls such as like collapsible items. So you can think of like an accordion where you click on a title and it opens up the content. Um, that's what this is. So you can you know, use UD collapsible to uh, add collapsible items, put more content in there. You could put other controls in here, charts or inputs, that kind of thing. Um, as well as a bunch of different um, input controls. So in this case, you can do like buttons or check boxes or switches or select drop downs or text boxes. Um, and then you can kind of hook that up in different ways, kind of similar to uh, like Windows Forms. They uh, have event handlers. So for example, here, if I click this button, I've specified an on-click event handler, and then I can take some sort of action um, on the back end in PowerShell to do something. So I'm just going to pop up a toast message, but you know, you could kick off a process or um, you know, send an email, that kind of thing. So now if we go back to the dashboard, you'll see some of that stuff that I've created. So here's the collections. Um, and yeah, step one, two, three. Here's the collapsibles. You can see they're interactive, and you can click them, that kind of thing. Put other controls in there. Um, and then finally, down here, some of the inputs. So if I were to click this, you see, oh, I have a typo in my uh, script. It should be show UD toast, not send UD toast. So it's showing an error. But that's pretty much what a toast looks like. Um, and then there's checkboxes and you know, text boxes drop downs, that kind of thing. All right, so I know the title of this uh, presentation was Data to Dashboards. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, visualizations now. So there are a bunch of like out of the box visualizations that you can use to actually get data and then um, show that data on your dashboard. So most simple um, way to show data is using a counter. So a counter is just a card with a, uh, a value in it that is a number, um, and then uh, it shows that. So, you know, lots of people might want to show, like, jobs run or, you know, tickets opened or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I actually have a Strava. I, I don't know if anyone knows what Strava is, but it's kind of like map my run sort of, sort of thing. So I made a Strava uh, PowerShell module. It's actually just a wrapper around their API using invoke rest method. Um, and what it's doing is it's going out to my Strava um, like account and then getting information about the like the workouts that I've done uh, in the past month. So in this, it looks a little complicated, but all it's really doing is it's saying new UD counter, uh, a title for the card that this counter is going to be in, an icon to show on the counter, and then it uses this endpoint concept. So the idea with an endpoint is that an endpoint uh, is executed anytime the page is loaded or this control is loaded. So uh, this is dynamic. That means uh, it doesn't happen when you actually define the dashboard. It happens when the page is loaded. So it's actually going out to Strava, um, and it's getting the current month's uh, activities. 
Um, and then I'm just getting the count of that and then returning that from the endpoint. And then what that yields is, you can see that I've done 17 activities this month. I got a little icon, I got the number, and that actually came from Strava's API. So I actually went out and invoked REST method uh, out to Strava's API and it returned that I have done 17 activities. So you can do all kinds of different things here. You can color this and you can like, you know, change the format of the numbers. Like if you have really big numbers, it'll change from like, you know, the 17,000 to 17K, that kind of thing. So that's what a counter is. So leading into like the next kind of that same regard, you can basically, there's, I, whether I missed it or not, it was kind of fast, this is awesome. But that the idea that you can have the page reload like every five seconds and it'll refresh that data. So if you're doing it to like pull an environment or do some other stuff like that, or is there another method to say, hey, this card refreshes on, a, on this cadence. And so you can go and get that data and have it dynamically refresh on the fly or maybe there's a different mechanism for that. I'm, I think you're. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Yep. So like any any control such as like a counter or a chart or anything like that, they all have um, auto refresh functionality. So you can actually specify an auto refresh, an auto refresh yeah. switch, and then you can say, I want to refresh this in this interval. So you know, every 30 seconds, every five seconds, every 10 seconds, that kind of thing. So. But it will refresh um, just that control too. And it'll refresh just that control, right? Yep. So you have to refresh the whole page, and um, because yeah. It's using the React framework, which is kind of cool. Is like you don't actually see anything change except the number, so it doesn't have to like redraw the whole page or anything like that. That's kind of cool about it. Um, yeah, it just kind of updates that one little tidbit of information. And uh, yeah. All right. Um, another basic kind of thing that you kind of expect from you know a website is uh, the ability to uh, show a table. So again, it looks a little complicated, but it's mostly me just formatting data that's coming from the Strava API. Uh, I have a new UD table, uh, specifying a title for that table, some headers for that table. And then again, I'm using endpoint. Um, and that means it's again gonna uh, load dynamically and you can do the auto refresh and everything like that. So I'm calling out to the Strava uh, activity API again. Um, I'm getting the last 10 activities I've done. And then I'm just looping through these and I'm formatting in them in, um, into a PS custom object. So I'm getting the type. Um, I'm converting the date uh, into a date time. So that's a little more readable. Um, I'm converting meters to miles. Um, I'm converting uh, the moving time from seconds into a time span. So you can actually see it again, it just kind of formats it a little bit nicer. And then I'm actually creating a link uh, inside that table so that I can click on that link and then go over to the activity. So now if I go back to my page, you'll see I now have a table of all the activities that I've done. So I did so a round. Right right yeah. So um, for someone who's watching this who may not be like super PowerShell pro, everything that you say makes sense to me, but do you have built into the stuff any like example pages or blocks of code that someone can kind of use as a template to kind of fill in if they're not so good with script blocks or, or that kind of stuff? Or is that in the forum somewhere? Because I, I imagine there's a lot of people that see this and say, this looks cool. I don't think I know how to do the code behind it, even though uh -huh. you know, a lot of it's straightforward. So if you go, well, I wonder if this is going to work. Yeah, like, like I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a clue what to put in the endpoint block. Like uh -huh. I, I, I get how to use new something and mm -hmm. this parameter that needs seven columns, but what goes in my endpoint block, I, I'd be scratching my head. Well, if you get pro, you could call them every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another sale. <Done. laughs> uh, I'm just trying to bring some up. I just I didn't have it configured on my computer, and now it should be. So if you run start UD dashboard without um, a dashboard itself, you specify a port, for example. I don't know why this is so slow right now. Come on. So I think the WebEx does that sometimes. I'm using that port again. Yes, that works. What is actually happening when you start UD dashboard? Is that creating a new site in INS and binding it to that port? It's actually hosted all in um, inside that uh, com console. So it's actually starting up. Um, <laughs> starting up a web server inside that 
the actual console. It's not actually going out to IIS or anything like that. Like you can host these inside IIS because it uses ASP.NET Core, but you can just, you know, stand alone inside the PowerShell process and it's actually running a web server. That's so cool. So if you start, um, if you just call star UD dashboard with port, uh, you know, whatever, you know, uh, and then you visit that inside your browser, uh, it actually has a um, a sample dashboard that is yeah, I'm running that right out of the show. has a whole bunch of different uh, examples of how to do the code, how to interact with all this stuff, um, and this is actually built off the um, the help that's built into the document or into the module. So all these codes, an example, like they're interactive and everything, and then you have the examples for each one of these, and if you want to see like how do I do an on change event for a, um, a checkbox like that? That's all inside um, the module. So you can actually go out, interact with this, see the code examples, see what it does when you actually click this stuff and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So there's examples there. There's also um, examples up on the GitHub repo. Um, and then this entire sample dashboard is actually um, up on the GitHub repo as well. So um, there's lots of samples out there kind of thing. Um, That's awesome. That's some really great documentation. So one of the last things I, I want to get, don't want to take you off topic and, you know, because some of this is, is kind of the basics, but um, if we have time, is it possible, I was talking to somebody who's used this before, and going, what's it really take to set this up? Take a brand new machine, hey, I got some, some dev machine, what do I need? Well, I need just IIS. He, so he just spun this up right now. But so you don't need anything. But, it runs but, inside the PowerShell process. It runs inside PowerShell process. It, it doesn't can, require IIS. It doesn't require web server. While you talk, you two are farting around over there. He's just said. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> he just said you can run it in IIS, or you can run it inside its own process inside PowerShell, basically. All right. Sorry. So, so just install the modules, basically. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was so fun. I was uh, I was trying to ask questions for the group. At least you didn't and, uh, know. More. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little still evening. Uh, Sorry, Adam. Yeah, it's all good. If you uh, if you go to the getting started page on there, it has like a one, two, three, get started kind of thing. So you know you got to install the module, you got to create a new dashboard, and then you can start that dashboard. So that's just an example of you know how to get up and running if you've never ever used this before kind of thing and get your website up. Is there a Docker image out there that already has the module loaded and all that kind of stuff? And uh, there is not a Docker image out there. Um, there's a Docker file in the repo. We just probably need to publish that to, you know, Docker Hub. Um, but yeah, I've had people ask about that before. I think it's just something we need to do. All right. Um, so. Let's go back and let's create some uh let's create some actual charts. So you can use new UD chart to actually create charts. So uh this is actually using a JavaScript library called chart.js and we've wrapped a bunch of PowerShell commandlets around it to make it like um a little bit easier to work with. Uh you don't have to do any JavaScript or anything, but like you guys kinda said, you know, it looks pretty PowerShell y if you're not like a huge you know, data formatter. I mean, you have to do some data munging to like get it in the correct format to actually put it in a chart, uh, such as grouping um, and grouping the object. And I'll show you why that is in that case. But again, I'm just getting all of my Strava activities and then I'm grouping them by type. So I want to see how many runs and rides and swims I've done this this month. Um, so that's where I'm using group object. And then uh, what I can do there is get the name of the group. So it's going to be either run or ride, I think, for this month. And then uh, I can aggregate all that uh, data together. So I could say, uh, for this group, give me all the moving times, sum them, and then turn them into total hours of um, time spent doing that activity. Uh, and then I just pipe it out to out uh, UD chart data. And is there a pipe missing here? We're going to see if this works. And then um, it should uh, create a chart. I'm trying to think. Oh, it did. So now I have a chart on my um, dashboard that shows that I've done like 6.3 hours of running and five hours of uh, riding uh, this month. So again, that's just all PowerShell, and these charts are interactive, and you can kind of hide data sets, that kind of thing. 
Um, and just like uh, taking like kind of the same data, munging it in a similar Probably way, fun. and just specifying something like a pie chart, you just change the type proper or parameter of this particular commandlet, and then what you end up with is after this loads. Adam, when you get a break here, we got a few questions. Uh oh, what did I do? Oh, you? Can you hear us, Adam? Um, Adam. Here with me. Oh, there we go. I fat fingered something somewhere. There it is. Hey, Adam, can you hear us? All right, let's start over. I heard on the stream. Hey, Adam, we have a few questions with you at ranking point. Or not. All right. Debugging on the fly. Let's see if it worked. Oh, I got two. All right, so there's a pie chart, right? You just change the, the type property, and then all of a sudden, um, you now have um, uh, a different type of chart. So uh, this is distance traveled uh, this month. There's also some other, like, built-in... Um, charts. Uh, one is called Nevo charts, kind of allows you to create some different charts um, that are available in ChartJS, uh, such as calendar charts or heat map charts. I really won't get into the you know, details of all this, but it kind of allows you to create charts um, that are a little hey, different. Adam, when you have so, a break, like, for example, have... here's a heat map chart, so you can kind of like grid things together, like, you know, it could be like states versus food or that kind of thing, um, as well as um, calendar charts. So kind mm -hmm. of think of like a GitHub um, contribution chart sort of thing, and that's what the calendar chart looks like. So there's a bunch of other different charts, and there's some other charts that we're looking at adding in terms oh. of like network charts and that's that so kind of thing. Um, yeah. So that is some of the visualization stuff that you can do. So, like I said, there's uh, kind of a lot here. There's even more. Um, one other place that I would recommend you go out to is there's the docs at universal dashboard.io. Um, again, has a bunch of information, kind of more detailed than you're gonna get um, even in the help documentation about all kinds of things, about all different components, the data visualization components, learning all about the different charts, yeah, and doing you know like multiple data sets, all that kind of thing. So tons of information out there and how to actually create that stuff using Universal Dashboard. Hey Adam, can all you right. hear us? So now we're going to talk a little bit about inputs because it's really funny. I, I built this and then immediately people were like, uh, I want to be able to like input stuff into you know Universal Dashboard. Um, are you guys talking? And I see uh, the chat popping up. One sec. Uh, how do I get to the chat? Questions. There are questions. Oh, yeah, we're muted. You gotta be. What's the Hello. The microphone. Hold on. Are we self muted? Yours now. Hey, Adam, can you hear Adam? Adam? <laughs> Could hear you before, guys. Uh, <laughs> Adam? I wonder why. Adam? Adam? I think he's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, loud. Hey, let me try to stop sharing or something once. <laughs> I can't hear anyone. How about Adam? Adam? My name is Adam. Madam, my name is Adam. Uh, Adam, can you hear me on the uh, my mic? It's gotta be him. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. We can I hear can, you. I, I can hear you guys now. Hey. I'm back. You All right. got tired of us. Adam, I have a question for you. Yeah, yeah we have questions for... that uh, are backed up. 
So All right. in your, right. your chart that you showed us, um, I didn't see anywhere where you were tying that chart to a uh, um, to a specific location, a specific uh, a place, a receptor holder uh, on your web page. Is it? Are you just? This is an instance where you're just saying take the next available uh, spot on the web page and put it there, or or was there a, is there a way to to say yeah I set aside this particular um, card, put it in this card. So in this case, I'm actually using new UD layout here on 448, and then as I add controls to it, it's laying them out in a two column format. So that's why it's uh, it looks uh, it looks like this because I've, I've specified it. So one thing to note is uh, you're asking about the cards. So they're automatically in cards right now. Um, if you do a new UD chart, it automatically puts a card around that new UD chart. So we're thinking about changing that so you can kind of have car or charts outside of cards. Um, but yeah, that's why it's in this two column layout and that they're automatically in cards. That makes sense. You guys, can I not hear you anymore? Yes. Okay. That answered my question. All right. Cool. So we had a couple others. If you want to just pause for one second. Yeah. Um, so you you want to? I know David Stein is on remote, and he had a question about wow. any recommendations for using Universal Dashboard inside a module. I think was the question. David, if you just want to unmute yourself and ask, that's cool too. Okay. Uh, my fans are going to kill you guys. I got a lot of fans running around me. Um, yeah, if you're going to write a module that depends on it, do you have any recommendations, just general tips, gotchas, things so you don't reinvent the wheel or step on ourselves while we're making something that leans on that or runs on it? Um, some things that gotchas you're going to run into, I guess, when building a module that uses this is uh, that Universal Dashboard, like the actual execution of these background endpoints, it run, they run in different run spaces. So I think that like catches people up a lot where they've defined a lot of functions inside a module and then they try to use them inside their dashboard and they're not available. Um, there's a bunch of documentation on how to make sure that your dashboard has access to those functions and that kind of thing, um, just because of the nature of having background run spaces. So I'd say that's one thing that you definitely got to look out for. Um, the other thing is right now, um, the modules are kind of a fork of themselves. So if you choose to have something built on Universal Dashboard or Universal Dashboard Community, um, it's kind of hard to take a dependency on that in your module manifest because um, they're like two very separate modules at the moment, um, even though they have all the same command lines and that kind of thing. So that's a little bit tricky. Um, and I think at the moment you really can't take a dependency on those that's enforced inside the module manifest, but you can make the decision inside of PSM1 to like, uh, load either one, whichever one's available. Um, but in the future, we're hoping to like break those modules up and have like universal dashboard core that only has like all the core commandlets and that kind of thing. So I'd say those are the two big gotchas for including it in a module right now. Does that answer your question? Yes, they said yes. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, any other questions, or should I keep going here? Bill, do you got anything? No, no, I think you're good. Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about inputs. Um, new UD input allows you to kind of create a form based on um, either criteria that you specify yourself or automatically from a param block. So uh, in this case, we're using new UD input. Uh, we're specifying a title, basic inputs, and then we have an endpoint. And at the top of that endpoint, uh, similar like you would do with a function or a script block, you can specify a param block. And based on like the criteria that you put on these different uh, parameters in this param block, uh, it will actually adjust that form automatically based on that information. So by default, if you don't specify anything, it creates a text box using just you know the text. Uh, if you specify a switch, it's going to be a bool that will be a checkbox. Um, and if you have something like an enumeration, like day of the week, um, it's going to create a, a dropdown. So in this input, uh, I'm going to take these three uh, inputs and then uh, show a toast message that includes those inputs. You could do anything, like you could integrate with Active Directory to create a user or you know kick off a job, that kind of thing. 
Uh, so if we go back to the dashboard and go to the inputs page, now you'll see this is a, how, like a, what a basic input looks like. Um, we have the three fields that uh, we created from that input, and if I said like Adam, and I check this and select Wednesday, and then I click submit, you'll see that this little toast has appeared in the top right corner over here, and it has the three values that I selected, Adam, True, and Wednesday. So um, you can do all kinds of stuff with inputs. Um, Quick question. Just that. Yep. Is there input with like uh, for passwords, like if you do an AD user, where you can do a password with the text like start out or like point out? Yep. So I'll show you uh, how to do custom inputs. Um, uh, it gives you like more control than you would necessarily have with just a param block. Um, what you can do is you can actually specify the fields directly. And um, that's how you get things like file fields or if you wanted a password field, that kind of thing. Um, and that allows you to kind of control that. So there's files, there's actual um, binary files. If you want to open like, like images or Excel files, that kind of thing. Files for like text files, that kind of thing. So um, I'll show you that. Actually, I could just show that now that we have it. So in, in that scenario, what you do is you actually specify the input field in this content block, and then in the endpoint, it actually receives those values. And then the, this new UD input field has all kinds of parameters um, for configuring uh, what that input field looks like. So I'd say there's probably some work to be done to kind of clean that up a little bit, but it does actually offer a lot of functionality in terms of building some pretty robust inputs. So in this case, it's actually taking a file um, and then it's getting the content of that file, converting it to CSV, and then showing it in a modal. So hopefully that works. I should be able to click this. And then I think if I, uh, let's see, copy this path, go back to my browser. I think I have a CSV in here. And click Submit. So now I actually uploaded that CSV to the website. It took that CSV, I processed it with convert from CSV, and then I output it into a grid. So um, yeah, so it allows you to kind of do that kind of stuff. But it's uh, pretty, pretty robust inputs. Um, there's also things like validation and that kind of thing that I guess I'll just skip over in because uh, of time. All right. Um, one thing I love touching on is dynamic interfaces, just because it's really fun. Um, and I, people end up using this quite a bit, um, just because it's like that whole like Windows Forms concept where you know you, you create a button and it interacts with this text box, and then you grab this kind of thing. So what Universal Dashboard actually uses is um, a technology called Signal R and WebSockets to communicate in between the browser and the web server, kind of in real time. So. Uh, most browsers support WebSockets these days, unless you're using like IE 10 or something. Um, but what that allows you to do is things like this. So I have a just a random element at the top of my page, and I want to click a button, and I want to actually set the content of that button to some something. So pretty much how you do that is you say new UD button, the text of the button, and you can put an on-clicked event handler, and then you can set the content of that placeholder. So it's kind of similar to how you would do in a Windows form app where you would say like, I want to set the text of this particular label to this after I click the button. And then we go to the dynamic input pages. If I click this, you'll see that that text now appears when I click that button. And that just kind of happened instantaneously. And it's kind of cool because there's a lot going on there. You know, you click the button, it sends a web request up to the web server, it runs some PowerShell, it sends one back to the client and it updates the the actual text on the page. So it's kind of cool because it's something that you typically don't have access to in, uh, in traditional like um, web apps. So uh, you actually can do all kinds of crazy stuff in here like, um, you know, here let's uncomment all these and I'll show you some of the stuff that you can do. And uh, maybe we'll get into some of the code there. Um, but you can do things like adding new controls, showing modals, showing toasts, um, adding elements, removing elements uh, from the page. So if you want to get really complicated with your, your you know, quote unquote dashboard, um, you can do that. So you can, you know, show toasts, show modals, uh, add different elements to the page. You can clear elements from a page, that kind of thing. So um, it can, you can make really, really robust websites if you want to. 
sort of thing. So, um, yeah. But there's a bunch of different um, commandlets uh, around UD element. Um, it's kind of like the generic uh, name for different elements on the Universal Dashboard page. Um, so there's a bunch of different commandlets you can use to actually do that kind of thing. Um, you know, adding elements, clearing elements, setting elements, removing elements, that kind of thing. So, all right, uh, let's see. Custom components, like if you do know some HTML, you can, oops, oh, what did I just do? We're back. I got my keystroke wrong and I closed the page. Um, so what you can do is, uh, you can just create arbitrary HTML if you want to. Um, you don't actually have to write the HTML like you would here. Um, what you use is new UD element and it allows you to specify HTML tags. Um, and you can do attributes and, you know, do whatever you would normally do in a website if you have, you know, the need to do that, that kind of thing. Um, so that's possible. And for example, here I'm just creating a div, which is just a, a container pretty much. I'm setting the background color to black and the color to white and putting some text in it. And then it'll just appear, um, you know, on my dashboard just like that. So you can write HTML if you uh, need to. So um, I find that a lot of people like tweaking the look and feel of things. So they'll use this to like, you know, maybe put some custom flair on their uh, dashboards. Um, and that's even kind of cool because you can use like SVG tags to draw, draw things. Like this will draw like a, a square that's got uh, rounded edges and um, that kind of thing. So if we went back, uh oh, did I break it again? No, there it is. So you can actually draw things on, on your ba dashboard, that kind of thing. The other thing that's really cool is Universal Dashboard is very extensible and spent a lot of time making it so that you can actually import custom controls um, that are defined as modules themselves. So UD knob is not actually part of Universal Dashboard. You can actually get it from the PowerShell gallery, import it into your uh, you know, PowerShell environment, and then use it in Universal Dashboard. So that kind of opens it up for other people to develop um, custom controls for Universal Dashboard um, in JavaScript as well as PowerShell. So now we have this knob control that is actually not part of Universal Dashboard. I just imported it. It automatically loads the JavaScript and the PowerShell script and that kind of thing. Um, and now we have new controls. So I kind of like going forward, I want to kind of do more of this and kind of reduce the footprint of Universal Dashboard, and make it more like modular and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to include. Um, yeah, so that is now possible. So that kind of came out in the last couple of releases. All right, so let's talk a little bit about REST APIs. Like we were talking about before, I know there were some questions around invoke REST method and kind of how to use that. and um, this is kind of the other end of that. Like, how do we expose our PowerShell as a REST endpoint for someone to consume um, and then use something like invoke REST method or curl to actually execute that PowerShell script? So inside Universal Dashboard, what you can do is you can actually just define endpoints. So this has like no relation to the dashboard visualization itself. This is just an actual HTTP endpoint that's listening um, inside Universal Dashboard, um, and then running some PowerShell script when it's executed. So um, we have an endpoint here. Uh, the URL, URL is activity, and it's pretty much forwarding over to my get Strava activity um, commandlet. But what you can do here is you could call whatever. You could call Active Directory. You could put this, you know, over Exchange commandlet, that kind of thing, um, and then just return data back to um, the user over your uh, web server. So I think what I have to do, I don't think these are actually defined. You can actually just specify these endpoints and start UD dashboard. Um, and then it'll expose those endpoints for users to consume. So um, now after the web server is restarted, I should now have access to uh, invoke these particular endpoints. So here's an example of how to use invoke rest method to actually call out to Universal Dashboard. Oh, man, I don't know if you guys have had this problem, but if I cut and paste into VS Code, this happens all the time. So we're going to do that in a console. Maybe I'll make it bigger. 
All right, so invoke REST method. Um, I'm calling out to the universal dashboard endpoint. Um, and then I'm calling the athlete endpoint of the API and specifying my Strava API token so that I can forward that on to Strava. And let's see if that works, hopefully. So now uh, that works. So it actually hit my web server that's running inside PowerShell. Um, that went out and hit the Strava API, uh, brought back the information, and then sent it all the way back to, to this console, which is running in you know, a different process. So that could you know, work remotely. Um, the other cool thing here is that we could actually you know, interface with things that aren't PowerShell. So if I wanted to use curl, I can actually open up CMD, paste this curl command, because I have curl.exe on my path, call out to the same API, and you can see that it actually returned the JSON back to uh, this command prompt over curl. It wasn't even PowerShell. It's just over HTTP, you know, that kind of thing. So. It's a cool way to kind of allow, you know, heterogeneous systems kind of interface with PowerShell over a, a web server uh, with pretty minimal code. I mean, you don't really need to do that much inside this to get this to work, um, that kind of thing. All right, uh, let's see. What do I want to touch on here in the last couple minutes? Uh, I'll skip this. I kind of want to, maybe if I have time. Hey, Adam? Yeah. Listen, I just, we're not time constrained. I mean, obviously, okay. I appreciate you trying to stay within whatever we said, but if you want to go more, I mean, nobody is in a rush to get out of here. It's up to you. Don't okay. feel like you got to hit a win, hit a you know, hit an hour or something like that. I got to be home by one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll talk a little bit about this then because I think this is kind of a cool feature that. Um, it's somewhat overlooked sometimes in Universal Dashboard, the idea of like scheduled endpoints. So we have this web server, it's running, um, and you know, it's pretty much a hosted service. So you could run it in IIS or as a Windows service, which means that like it's always running and you can do things like scheduling these endpoints. So not only can you have like actual like web-based stuff, but you can have um, endpoints that run on a schedule. So using the same UD endpoint commandlet, you just specify a schedule, and then that endpoint will actually run on that schedule. So I've specified a schedule that every 10 minutes I want to run this endpoint, um, which is then going to call out to the Strava API and get my athlete information and store it in what's called a universal dashboard cache variable. So a cache variable is available throughout universal dashboard, which means that you can use it in any endpoint. Um, and usually what this is for is for like speed or like rate limiting concerns because, you know, as I said before, when someone hits your dashboard, uh, it's going to execute that PowerShell uh, script. And if you're going straight to someone else's API or you're calling out to Active Directory, um, then it could be kind of slow or, you know, eventually you're going to get rate limited, which is what happened to me uh, the first time I was developing this and right before I was giving this talk, um, one of the previous times I had done it, uh, I was actually rate limited by Strava and I could no longer call the Strava API for like four hours or something like that. Um, so that's why you would do something like this. Um, so pretty much this cache variable will live in the cache for 10 minutes where then it will reload that cache variable. So then, you can, sorry, you can set this up so that, you know, on, on a refresh, it will continue to like pull your environment as almost like a, like an up down timer like a, or like a, a a status monitor and then when something happens it just it it's only lives within the cache and then you can refresh the cache on the fly is there a mechanism to do that you know i don't know uh, you I'm, I'm could to... refresh it on the fly yep so if you had like a button or something like that or a rest endpoint or anything any way that you could set this variable you can actually refresh that cache variable so um anywhere yeah, that Give me the status now, um, but uh, behind the scenes, it will just continuously refresh, you know, almost like a refresh button. Yep. And then there's still a, a service in the background, this schedule in the background, that's continuously refreshing the environment so the page is always accurate up to 10 minutes ago. Yep, exactly. And then if you're having multiple people use your uh, dashboard at once, it's going to be like a real big um, performance saver for you. Um, Rather than hitting, you know, 80, 30 times because 30 people are using it, you hit it once every 10 minutes, and then anytime someone loads it, you just load it from memory. So, um, yeah. 
Oh. And cash variable. Oh, yeah. So, so it's storing the data. So for clients that are loading the page, don't have to keep going back and make the calls. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. So it's almost like a even. This is like a best. It's a it's a good tip, best practice that you should be using this kind of method to, especially if you're going to use it for almost a dashboard that everyone's going to be looking at instead of refreshing. So the 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 app itself is refreshing that data on its own cadence versus you know everybody kicking refresh. Yep, exactly. Or, yeah. So okay. I actually have a blog post out there about performance considerations when building universal dashboards because of things like this. Um, you know, PowerShell is not necessarily built to be a web framework. Uh, so UD, UD can do about a thousand requests a second, that kind of thing. Whereas like, you know, C sharp uh, compiled language is like very, you know, magnitudes and magnitudes faster than that. Um, that's why there's all these performance considerations you can make um, to use uh, Universal Dashboard in this way. So I would definitely say go out to the blog and look at the performance um, write-up I said about this. And it, yeah, it goes over cache variables and some other tips and tricks and that kind of thing. So. Adam? Yeah. Uh, uh, when you when you uh, get the results back from the Get Strava athlete, um, will it give you a timestamp of when, of when that data was sent to you? Um, no, not in this case. I don't think the Strava API gives me that. So if you wanted to invalidate this in a different way or know when that data was refreshed, you'd kind of have to do that manually at this time. So. Okay. Well, I was just thinking that when you dis when you display it or, or show it somewhere, that it'd be nice to be able to say current as of timestamp. Yeah. And you could do something similar or you could say like, you know, athlete data refresh stat or something, you know, and then put the date time in here. Yeah. You could use that cache variable to, you know, add a label somewhere, that kind of thing. Yep. All right. Um, I want to talk a little bit about maps just because it's cool and new and it's fun. I like didn't know about much about mapping technology until someone really wanted some maps for Universal Dashboard. So then I learned a lot about mapping technology, and now it's all built in Universal Dashboard. So I don't know how useful this is to most people. Um, we were actually working with a transportation company, and they have all kinds of routes and like markers, and they you know they use dashboards um, for their drivers to actually see. Uh, where they need to deliver, the route that they're taking, the different stops they need to make, that kind of thing. Um, and they wanted to build it in Universal Dashboard. So I was like, okay, let's see you know, what's involved inside of making a map. So now you can actually create maps using some pretty, I'd say pretty simple uh, com uh, commandlets if you know a little bit about mapping. Um, what this actually does is it creates uh, a map using new UD map. And then from there, what you can do is you can specify different layers of a map. So the kind of way that mapping controls work is you have uh, a base layer, which is typically what they call a tile server. And a tile server is what the actual like roads are drawn on or the satellite images, that kind of thing. And then the map actually loads those images um, from that tile server based on where you're looking and how zoomed in you are. So um, what we can do is kind of specify different tile servers using different base layers. There's all these like free tile servers out there. Um, there's even like uh, Bing, um, Bing maps you can load, that kind of thing. And uh, from there, you can specify overlays over the top of those base layers for things like markers. Like, you know, when you go to Google Maps, you pin something or there's a destination you're looking at, you can actually create uh, a marker um, on top of that map at a particular location. So um, if we actually go to this map control, I, I've kind of set up like this really, uh, really like hokey uh, demo of like all the different things you can do with the UD maps. Um, like I said, you can do markers and that kind of thing. Um, so if we were to go and look at one of these markers, you can see I have a marker that actually has a pop-up on that marker. Um, and I can specify any UD control I want inside um, that particular, uh, particular pop-up. Um, 
And if I wanted to do something like add a layer, I could click the add layer button. And now if we come over to the layer control, you can see that I have that new layer I just added where I added a whole bunch of little circles um, I just calculated uh, with some PowerShell that I drew all over the map. Um, you could do things like adding and removing like different polygons. So uh, the mapping libraries support things like circles and rectangles, but they also support things called polylines that allow you to draw like routes. So you can draw routes um, using what they call GeoJSON, which allows you, you know, it's kind of what Google uses when it maps your, uh, you know, destination from one place to the other. It draws a polygon or polyline um, across the roads on this base layer so you know where to go. Um, the other thing that the mapping control supports are things like uh, these, because they're called uh, marker clusters. So you can see, like, as I move in and out, the, the clusters kind of move together. So if you have a lot of markers in a single place, you can actually cluster them together, and then you can click on them to get closer and closer to those clusters of markers and eventually see uh, where the markers are. Uh, and finally, uh, there's heat maps. Let's see if this works. So a heat map is kind of, uh, can I remove this circle? Is just, you know, a, a series of, uh, you know, points on the map that uh, you can vary the intensity of, and then it creates a heat map. So people use it for like, um, you know, distributions of crime or something like that, um, that kind of thing uh, over the base layer. So this is all extremely interactive and it's actually all going back and forth um, from PowerShell to create these particular um, things. So if you actually look at like uh, the buttons here that are along the top, uh, it's just calling add UD element on um, that map or the cluster layer or whatever I'm interacting with to actually add different components to the map uh, dynamically that weren't there when the map first loaded. Uh, so yeah, you can go pretty crazy. Um, pretty crazy with maps nowadays. So um, I won't get into like the very fine details of how to do all of that, but just know that it's all there and you can kind of futz around with it. Um, if you do have some need to like build a map, you can build a really cool map <laughs> in uh, UD right now. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of uh, what I wanted to get into. I kind of want to give some more resources and some time to, um, for questions, that kind of thing. Um, so let me pull up some other resources that might be good. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, some questions from the chat. Yep. Is um, so does this integrate with SSL certs and all that? Yep. So uh, you can actually specify a certificate um, thumbprint on the command line, or you can use a cert provider from PowerShell to do that. Um, and if you're going through IIS or Azure, um, the way that works is it proxies over to Universal Dashboard, which is how your ASP.NET works. So they actually control all the certificate stuff in that case. So um, yeah, you can put certificates on everything. Um, somebody else is asking about um, um, the input forms. Uh, feel free to ask or reach out to me. Um, like adding the input form to a push value to my PowerShell script. So I guess you can take input and then call other scripts from it. Is that? I think that's the question. Uh, yes. So yeah, you can definitely call whatever command lines you want because it just calls that endpoint, which just runs a script block that um, you can put whatever script you want in there. Um, so yeah, like I said before, you could like, you know, onboard a user, create a uh, input field that like, you know, sets up their exchange account and their mailbox and like creates them an AD and like sets a default password, that kind of thing. Um, now you had mentioned it, it, it basically runs in a run space too. So it'll sit there, you know, you can click a button, and you can have it coming back on processing, processing, kind of, that kind of thing. Yep. So right now with the input, the uh, there isn't a very good like a background job um, process built in the UD. So what will happen if you click an input that takes a while, it will have a spinner showing that it's still running that particular process. Um, but there's no real way right now unless you kind of manage it yourself to kick off a job, um, come back and see the, pro the status of that job, that kind of thing. Um, unless you built that yourself. Uh, it's not totally built into UD at the moment, so. Okay. Yeah, and people can take themselves off mute and ask more questions. Uh, feel free to do that. Adam? Yep. Uh, do you have uh, 
do you have routing capabilities or is it all manual routed manual routing you know if you if you say these are the these are the points do you have uh, an example of uh, that routing have that routing being done like uh, yeah, I, I think I understand what you're asking. Um, I think I actually have an example of that that I might have skipped by. So there is the concept of dynamic pages. So uh, in, in here, what what you can do is um, define a page that uses this colon in front of it, uh, and then that dynamic page will receive that particular route value as a variable that then you can use in that page so that that could allow you you know like I want to look at you know this server the user types in the name of that server it goes to this dynamic page loads the information for that server and that that page is like um, custom for that server is that kind of what you're talking about well this these are the uh, in, in mapping uh, going back to your last topic of maps mapping. Uh -huh. Uh, you can let you can say I need to I need to visit these customers today. Uh -huh. So what is the most efficient route for my truck to visit those customers? Okay. Or is is that part is that? Oh, part of I the, see. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, there's no um, yeah, there's no route routing capability built directly into. You. Um, I looked at doing that, and there's some JavaScript libraries out there and that kind of thing that allow you to you know, generate the routes based on the roads and that kind of thing, but that's not built in right now. So you'd have to use like a third-party system to like generate that polyline and then put it on the map. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can build the, the, so I'm going to mention this, this dynamic thing, the idea that you could have it, can you like, almost like, build a link that is a link to the dynamic page. Is that kind of, I'm trying to like wrap my head around what I'm really asking is you can build a table, of, you know, here's all my, you know, sets of servers and the link is actually a new page with a new, with all then all the details of that server. So it's almost like right. a, in the, the same vein as uh, like admin studio or admin center, you know, kind of like that view. Yep. So kind of my example here is uh, I have a text box that you can enter something, and then oh, yeah. what it's going to do is redirect you to a page, and then it's going to put that value that you entered into the URL itself. Mm -hmm. So then when you visit that page, um, you're going to have access to that that value as um, you know. A variable, and then you can customize that entire page based on that variable. So, uh, if we go back to that input page now, I have this input action, and I was like, "Hello," let me know about that. And you hit submit, and you can see the URL of the page up here is dynamic page slash hello, and then here the dynamic page actually rendered based on what I typed in. So it says we went to hello, but if you look at the script block that I typed in. It's we went to dollar sign info. Um, so whatever they typed in, that was available as a variable, which then you could use to like get, generate, you know, the page, you know, based on like a server name or a username, that kind of thing. So effectively, info is just a single variable. But if you wanted to pass multiple variables into that string, uh, you could info, either info yeah, you could either do more uh, route variables. It also supports things like um, oops. It supports things like query strings, so if you want to do something like value equals text, that kind of thing, that's also avail available as a variable inside your dynamic page. So, yep. And everything that you showed tonight, Adam, is the community edition? So what I showed tonight that is the only thing that isn't in the community edition was the nice. maps. The maps is an enterprise feature, but other than that, everything was in the community edition. I mean, I'm just, I'm just blown away by how, how complex it is and how flexible it is, and that's all basically open source. So, that is an awesome job. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so definitely check it out and play around. Um, yeah. Sure. I do yeah. want to leave you guys with some resources, if you, unless you guys have more questions. I'll, uh, I have a question. So, yeah. If I want to be going with this. Let's say I want to make a page that's just available to everybody. 
you mentioned it's available in Azure, it's available in uh, Docker. Like, what's the best way to go about doing that? Is there just like a, a image you spin up in Azure, or is there like how would you go about even doing that? Uh, currently, there is not an image. What you can do, there is some documentation about running dashboards in different places. Um, I have kind of a walkthrough on how to run it in Azure, how to set up a web app, that kind of thing. Um, there isn't like an Azure RM template or anything like that at the moment, but this is exactly how to do it. Um, extract the content of the module, put it in the WWW group. Yeah, that's pretty much what it happens. And then you okay. include your dashboard file, and then it automatically kind of finds that dashboard file uh, if you put it in in the WW root with it, with the module itself, and then it just starts up the, the web server. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Can't do that, yes, I think. Yeah, and then IIS is a very similar process. Um, there's been some blog posts about running in Docker containers and then Docker inside Azure. Uh, as well as AWS, so um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, yeah, the docs page is really good for some of that stuff and the step-by-step -step kind of things. Um, it does have some of the components, which is pretty good. Um, a bunch of the stuff around authorization and authentication, that kind of thing. Um, the other place that I always point people to is the forums. Like the forums are really active. Um, since we've been on this call, someone has already, you know commented on a, a post late here at night, um, that kind of thing. So this is where I see announcements about new releases or blog posts I put out. Um, another cool thing about the forums is a lot of people will post their dashboards that they've created. So you can kind of see what other people are building, like help desk toolboxes and that kind of thing. Um, they've converted WP, you know, WPF applications into universal dashboards and that kind of thing. So if you need a little like uh, primer into like what people are building, yeah. definitely check that out. Um, cool. The other place uh, is the GitHub repository. Um, so, uh, like I said, all open source up here on GitHub. File issues if you have feature or feature requests or you're running the bugs and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing that we're running right now is we actually have a bounty program going for some of our bugs. So uh, there's some like simple, you know, semi-simple bugs if you can know a little bit about, you know. JavaScript or uh, C# -sharp or anything, uh, you can contribute and make a little money. Um, we're actually giving away free cash, not really free, but you know, if you work on some of these uh, bugs and you close out that bug, you can get a couple bucks for um, doing that. Um, yeah, let's see what else I want to show off. Oh, uh, one last thing is uh, we just released this yesterday. Um, the Universal Dashboard Marketplace. So pretty much what this website does is it synchronizes with uh, the PowerShell gallery looking for anything with particular tags, um, such as uh, modules people have created or con custom controls people have created and published to the PowerShell gallery. So it's an easy way to kind of search for modules that are or, uh, dashboards and controls that exist already that you can just use, you know, install module, um, if you click on one of these, it has like, you know, I can install module this UD Active Directory uh, dashboard, and then I have an Active Directory dashboard running in my environment, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so if you do come up with cool stuff and you want to publish it here, there's also information on how to publish it to the gallery so it actually shows up on the marketplace uh, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think that is my spiel. So um, I guess I'll open up to questions one more time. And, so first off, before anybody even gets a question, thank you so much for presenting tonight. That was awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. I love it. I love it. Um, I unfortunately don't have the chat. My laptop died, so someone's got to no. keep an eye on the chat for Adam. No, there's no more questions. Just other thank yous, and just this is just you know, mind blown. You know, mind blown, and, and the idea that you know just needs.